Uh, welcome learners. Today we want to look at the extraction of metals, particularly extraction of copper. Now to begin to look at the main ore for extraction of copper, which is uh, the natural form is called copper pyrite. The chemical name is called copper ion disulfide. The chemical formula is Cu F E S two. Now the other O, we have two of them. We have in, in natural form is called malachite. The chemical name is basic copper carbonate. The formula is Cu bracket OH two dot Cu CO three. That is basic copper carbonate. Now the other O is called copper clans. The chemical name is copper one sulfide. Then the extraction process begins from one crushing of the O. The O is ground into fine powder so as to increase surface area for extraction of copper. Number two is concentration of the O. The aim here is to remove impurities. This is done by what you call float flotation. Now description of that process is as follows the ground ore is mixed with water containing special oil such as pine oil as protein agents whereby the oil dissolves the minerals while water dissolves impurities now what happens at that is a fruit rich in minerals fall at the top while water and impurities sing at the bottom the fruit is skimmed off and dried. Now, after concentration of the ore, the next stage is reduction of the ore. Now, when using copper pyrites, the step involved are as follows. Step one occur in the first roasting furnace, whereby the copper pyrite is roasted in limited supply of air in a large flat furnace so as to create large surface area to form by copper pyrite reacts with oxygen to form copper one sulfide, iron two sulfide, and sulfur foxide. The equation is as follows: copper pyrite, that is copper di copper iron disulfide plus oxygen RO, copper one sulfide plus iron two oxide plus sulfur foxide. Chemical equation is as shown below. Cu F E S two plus O two gives you copper one sulfide plus iron two oxide plus sulfur four oxide. To balance the equation, I put here two and I put here two. Then I put here four. Then I put here three. Balance the equation. Now this copper one sulfate and this one go to the next stage. This one is emitted outside. Now in stage number two, step two occurred in what you call the smelting furnace. Now in the smelting furnace, silicon foxide is added to the mixture of copper one sulfates and iron two oxides and eat it in the absence of air whereby the silicon foxides react with iron two oxide to form iron two silicates which separate out as lack leaving copper one sulfide. The equation for the reaction occurs follows iron two oxides plus silicon foxides gives you iron two silicates. Chemical equation is as follows iron 2 oxide plus silicon 4 oxide gives you iron 2 silicates which is a liquid this is a solid here and this is a solid so this is what they call the slug 3 occur in the second roasting furnace whereby 
the copper one sulfide is heated in a regulated supply of air where some of it is converted to copper one on in the equation below copper one sulfide plus oxygen RO copper one oxide plus sulfur for oxide the chemical equation is Cu that is copper one sulfide plus oxygen gives you copper one oxide plus sulfur four oxide now to balance the equation I put here two I put here two I put here two that oxygen becomes six I place here three now the remaining copper one sulfates reacts with copper one oxide formed to form copper and sulfur four oxides as shown in the equation below copper one sulfates plus copper one oxide arrow gives you copper plus sulfur four oxide the question is as follows copper one sulfide which was remaining plus copper one oxide formed gives you copper plus sulfur four oxide to balance the equation i place here i place here two then i place here four place here six to balance the equation now the copper forms in this reaction is called blister copper it's impure it's about 95 to 97 percent pure now the reason why it's called blister copper is because the when liquid copper form is cooled it solidifies releasing bubbles of sulfur foxate gas which gives it a blister appearance now this type of copper is used for making boilers and pipes only now to obtain copper used for making electric electrical cables it is purified by electrolysis now the last stage now becomes purification of copper now that's done by electrolysis where the impure copper is made the anode the pure copper is made the cathode the electrolyte should contain copper ions e.g copper sulfates copper chloride or copper nitrates the diagram below shows electrolysis of the diagram below shows purification of copper stage this longer line the bacteria is positive is negative that is connected to the anode which is made of impure copper and this negative comes the cathode which is made of pure pure copper the left idea i said it contain compounds so for example i use here copper sulfates now the ions the ions will be present will be copper ions hydrogen ions sulfate ions and hydroxide ions now sulfate ions and hydroxide ions migrate to the anode now because the anode is made of copper and the solution made of copper ions none of those ions get charged at the anode instead the copper anode dissolves into solution as shown below copper solids arrow copper ions plus two electrons the ions that the ions that migrate to the cathodes are hydrogen ions and copper ions now the ions discharge at the anode will be copper ions because copper ions is below hydrogen electrochemical series so the question at the anodes copper 2 plus aqueous plus two electrons give you copper solids 
copper solids. Now, point to note from that is traces of so I said traces of gold and silver collect as large at the bottom of a electrolytic cell. Now, the flow diagram below, the, the flow chart below shows extraction of copper by using copper pyrite. Now, in the previous uh, description, we said the first stage number one is uh, crushing of the ore. Then after that, we have what we call concentration of the ore to remove the impurities. Then the concentrated ore now, this uh, pure pyrite, pure ore, enters in the first stage number one. Now, the whole of this reaction is summarizing what's called the reduction of copper pyrite, whereby the stage number one and the reduction was occurring in the first roasting furnace here, where the copper pyrite was heated in air to form copper one sulfides iron two oxide and sulfur oxide which gets out of here. Then in the next stage it was occurring in a smelting furnace where you bring in silicon oxide. It reacts with iron two oxide to form iron silicate, remove the slug. And then the next stage we take in copper one sulfides where it occurs in the second roasting furnace whereby some of these first of all reacts with oxygen to form copper one oxide and sulfur oxide which gets out of this point then the remaining of this one now reacts with the copper one sulfide formed to form copper plus sulfur oxide then in this stage now we have what we call purification of copper that is by electrolysis and then you get here pure copper the properties of copper includes this ductile it is malleable it has high melting and boiling points due to strong metallic bonds. It is a good conductor of heat and electricity due to presence of the localized electrons. Chemical properties include copper does not react with steam and water. Copper does not react with dilute acids. Hot copper reacts with chlorine gas to form copper 2 chloride. Then finely divided copper burns with a blue flame in air to form black copper oxides. Uses of copper include it's used to making coins and ornaments, making soldering instruments due to high thermal conductivity, making electrical wires, contact in switches, plugs, and sockets because copper is a good conductor of electricity. It is used to also making alloys such as brass made of copper and zinc, bronze, copper and tin. Lanas, that marks the end of a stretch of metals. The next lesson we're going to look at organic chemistry too.